Howdy guys, in this video I'm going to take you through how to build this ultra realistic wargaming table. With a couple of simple steps, you yourself could create something as nice as this in a short time. Hi, and I'm Luke, home of Affordable Professional Scenics. If you'd like to check out my range, visit www.geekgaming.co.uk. Right, so starting off, we're going to need a base material. Now, this is 9mm MDF. The reason we use this is it's lightweight. We're going to use a border of 25mm because that's the depth of the foam. If you'd like an in depth tutorial on how to build this lightweight gaming table step by step, I do have a video which I'll pop up in the right hand corner for you now. Just putting some pilot holes in, and then we're going to countersink it so you don't scratch your mother's table. From that, fasten and fix the beams. Cut off the excess with a razor saw, mind them fingers. And then we're about ready to apply the foam. My new favourite way of cutting foam is with a razor saw. No hot wire tools needed and it's clean. After applying some uh, Luke's APS fast drying basing glue, fit in your foam and that'll be ready to work with in about 5-10 minutes. Now all I'm doing now is planning the ground formation. Um, the initial idea of this is to have a hill uh, with a ruined temple on it, uh, an ocean down in the bottom corner um, and a raised area at the top where the river will be flowing down into the ocean. So we'll mark this out with a sharpie or any pen or pencil will do. We fit that in place using some cocktail sticks. Now we'll put some gator glue down and then we'll push it down on top of them sticks. Now do be careful with this, it can be quite fiddly. Um, so make sure it's all lined up and perfect before pressing it down into place and securing with more cocktail sticks in an angle from the front. Now. To create a basic landform, we're going to use a heat gun. There's another reason for this, which we'll cover in a second. Um, but do do this in a ventilated area. Open a door, window, do it outside. It's probably the best place. Now, I've used some polyurethane filler foam uh, to fill where we've gone a bit mental with the heat gun. Um, if you're not bothered about weight, you could just fill this with your modelling compound. This was going to be a lightweight gaming table, so that's why we use urethane foam. So... I know people don't like burning foam, um, but because we're trying to make this as lightweight as possible, uh, I will be using some uh, modelling compound on this to firm it up and get some ground structures. But people don't like using cheaper polystyrene because it's soft. Now when you run the heat gun over it or a, a blowtorch, that is rock hard. I mean it's, it's even hard to cut. Um, so. Using cheap foams, if you are going to burn it, do do it outside, don't burn it and sit and breathe it in. But, it does make cheaper polystyrene rock solid to work on top of, uh, and that's why I do it. I know it looks a bit shit and a bit rough at the minute, but we use a modelling compound to sort that all out. At the end of the day, this is not the important bit, this is just getting your rough shape and then we work from that. Um, so. Don't be afraid, if it is looking crappy at the moment, you can fix all that modelling compound. But we're doing this as, as steady as we can, like that's why we're putting all this foam down. So we use as little modelling compound as possible to keep the weight down. Um, so yeah, burn polystyrene. Right guys, so on to the modelling compound. This is my product, if you'd like to purchase it, do check the links below. Now, put it on thickly. Um, once that's in place, just get it out, squashed out to fill in all them gaps. Tap it to bring the water to the surface, which will make it pretty flat. Um, and after about 5-10 minutes, this will start to dry. Once that starts to dry, you need to get it wet. Wet your hand, and then you can smooth this right out. And that will make that beach blend into the ocean floor and get rid of all them nasty foam lines. Right, once you've done that all over, that's what it should look like. And it should be all blended in and nicely looking like a realistic ground formation. While you're leaving that to dry for around 15-20 minutes, pour yourself some rock moulds. This is from Woodland Scenics, if you'd like to buy any of these, I do have an affiliate Amazon link below, where you can purchase exactly the same rock moulds that I've used in this video. 
This is a Luke's APS casting plaster. Uh, it's a very fast drying, hard plaster. Perfect for the rock moulds. After about 20 minutes, pop them out. And you should be left with some high detailed rocks that look realistic. How I apply these is I use some uh, hot glue. Um, I don't leave the hot glue on for a very long time. I just get it to a point where it'll just come out so it doesn't melt the foam when I stick them on. You don't need a lot of this because the modelling compound that you'll use for blending the rocks in later will hold them in place. Once they're in place, I assemble the uh, ruined temple. If you'd like to see a video on what I did for assembling this ruined temple in great detail, uh, there's a video in the top right hand corner for you to click and watch later. But all these are is her starts, squares, um, and I put a rough temple together using her starts, moulds, um, some cake pillars, bits of foam, and a load of bits of rubble and stuff made from plaster of Paris and all sorts of other things. Don't forget to put any of your offcuts of rubble and debris in the sea or anywhere around it, because you can use that to add more realism to your piece. And that's what the Ruined Temple looked like when it came to completion. Um, like I said, if you do want to watch that, make sure you watch that video later. Now I'm using a Xandra Dust type sand colour just to paint over all the ground, ready for the ground covers going down. While that's drying, we're going to paint as rock faces and all the rocks that we've put and outcrops all around the board. First up, a brownie grey, then an ochre, and then a black. Put a couple of drops in a cup and add around... 80% water. This is so we can apply the leopard spot technique to the rocks to make them look as realistic as possible. Give them a good mix, make sure you get that pigment right into the water. Now for applying, uh, I put on the okra first. Now it is slightly dirty because I've mixed all of them at the same time, but don't worry about it, they're all going to get mixed together anyway. It's the best thing about this technique, it is very messy, it is very just throw it on and hope to see where it looks like at the end. After you've put that okra on, I go on to the, um, the grey brown and I brush that all over. This is just to get rid of the whiteness of the rock. Now, I was feeling it needed a bit of warm colour in there, so I got some ready brown, and I just dropped that across maybe 50% of it. Then I do an all over black wash. And a slight uh, creamy dry brush over the whole thing once it's dry. And that's what you're left with. Right, so mix in some PVA glue. The better quality the PVA glue, the better it's going to work. So obviously, you need the best. Add some water. Get it to a quite runny consistency. And then we'll paint this in small areas all over the board as we go. Now once you've got that in a sufficient place, around a square foot or so, mix up some soil with some tile grout and some pigments or cement dyes to get the required colour that you want for your ground coverings. Sprinkle these on, as thick or as thin as you want, trying to get a nice ocean floor covering and the rest of the board. Best thing about these ground covers is one, you don't have to paint them, and two, within having tile grout, they stick very hard. Now, cover this in isopropanol and then spray it with watered down PVA glue to seal in place. While this is damp, uh, the tile grout will start to activate and it will go as hard as cement once it's dry. Keep repeating this process all over the board until uh, so you've completely covered all your areas. Now 
Now for coarse and rough areas, I like to use my base ready. This is desert sand and stone. As you can see, the colours are brilliant for the ocean, uh, the riverbed. Uh, they're great for just rocky outcroppings and rough areas of the sand. Now what I like to do is, if I'm having a really rough patch, is I like to put this down first. Um, straight onto the watered down PVA glue. And then once I've put that down, I go back to the ground covers, which is the soil, the tile grout, and the uh, cement dyes or pigments, whatever you want to use. And I sprinkle this over the top. Now you might be thinking that's going to cover that up. It doesn't. Uh, you spray that on, you sprinkle that on, and then when you come in with your watered down PVA glues and spray it, it washes it off and it sort of weathers the rocks and makes them blend them in better. It's my new way of doing things, and I really do like it. What do you think? Put it in the comments below. Leave them ground covers overnight to dry, and as you'll see, they'll start to lighten up nicely and look realistic. Now, from that, we're going to add some sea details. These are going to be barnacles, a bit of green stuff, cut the end off a pipette. Press them onto the rock and then press the pipit into the green stuff. It's as simple as that. If you'd like to watch another video on this, do check the top right. Right, now onto the water effects. This is uh, water clear epoxy uh, from CFS. It's a two part epoxy. It's very simple to use and very user friendly. If you'd like to watch a detailed video on pouring resins, I'll put that in the top right. Now, I add a turquoise ink to this, um, just to give it that sort of Mediterranean sea look. I don't go over the top, because I want to leave it quite transparent to show the lovely seabed below. Now, with it shining through the um, turquoise ink, you get a really nice, realistic look, um, with minimal effort. That's why we did spent time doing the, um, the ocean bed, painting the rocks, putting all the rough and coarse textures and the light sands in there. So when you pour the resin over the top, it does all the work for you. This is a very fast drying resin, uh, once you've used the blowtorch on top to get rid of all the bubbles, leave it around 6 hours and you're ready to move on to the next step. Now, once that's dry, let's get on to weathering that beach and making it look like it's got wet sand uh, where the coastal marks will be. It's as simple as just glazing the sand really, it's some sapia wash, and put it on with a little bit of water in, add more water, keep repeating this higher and higher until you're happy with the finish put a gloss varnish on it to make it look wet and then we'll move on to the water effects as you can see once that's dry looks lovely right these water effects are one of my homegrown creations if you'd like to see how to make this check the top right all the video links will be in the description below also, um, but this is a product you can buy from uh, Geek Gaming, uh, it's called Clearfix, it's a hybrid polymer which makes water effects as simple as anything. All you've got to do is put them on, it'll self level and give it a really nice soft natural ripple. As it starts to dry you can manipulate it and play with it to give it more harsher details in areas where you want stronger currents. Or if you want it to just leave it nice and soft and polite, you just let it self level and you'll get a really nice soft ripple. For waves, you just don't mix this down as much. You keep it quite thick and then lay it down quite thickly in areas and keep playing with it and manipulating it until you get to a point where it's starting to hold its shape. After a while, you should be able to make some nice waveforms in the matter of minutes. With it already clear, you can tell what it's going to look like as you're working with it, unlike working with acrylics or other wave products on the market. It's very simple, it's very quick, and it will be dry in the matter of hours. 
for painting it I do a very subtle amount of white paint on top um, because I don't like over white uh, water effects it seems to take away from the realism just a little amount of white on the tips just breaks it up enough so you can see it's a wave and moving nicely and once it's done it looks superb if I don't say so myself If anybody would like to have a go at doing this themselves, do remember you can buy all the products used in this video below at www.geekgaming.co.uk. All the proceeds go to me and my beer fund. Now for static grass, this is using the Luke's APS static grasses. There is a Mediterranean board uh, deal on at the moment. If you'd like to check out, do check the links. The applicator is also purchasable from us and it's from Warworld Scenics is the applicator. And it's just building up loads of different lengths and layers and colours of static grass to get a really nice, realistic looking grass. Now once you put your grass down, it is good just to comb it. Just to give it that sort of blown and wild grass look. When it's all a bit perfect, it doesn't look that nice, you do this, and it just adds another level of realism that's normally forgotten about in wargaming tables. And once it's done, you're left with a beautiful gaming board that you can play on for years to come and, and tell all your friends that how proud you are of creating such a masterpiece. I know I was, and I haven't shut up about it since. If you want to ask any questions, guys, put them in the comments below. Catch you in a bit. So guys, I hope you've hoped this video, um, it was just nice just to put the whole build together in a, in a sh shortish video, it's about 40 hours condensed into about 20 minutes or so, um, I just thought I'd do it because a lot of people have been asking on how I did things that are not in the individual videos, but I thought together you can put everything together yourself and have a good go. But yes guys, if you are liking what I'm doing and you want to support the channel, check the links to my store below. I've got all my scenics there. For anything that I don't sell, I have Amazon affiliates and there's all the different things that I use on Amazon, from Amazon or eBay or whatever. All them sort of products will be on the Amazon affiliate links. It doesn't affect you at all. It just means that I get some money every time you buy something through my Amazon store. Also, if you're just watching the channel as an average viewer uh, and you want to support, but you, obviously you don't need any of my scenics, I have t-shirts, I have hoodies, I've got comical mugs and stickers and everything found on Teespring, where you can support all your, all your favourite YouTubers like I do, look. <laughs> but anyway guys, thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in, and if you have liked this style of video, do let me know in the comments below, um, because every time I do a big build, I might section it out into the nitty gritty stuff and then do a like an overview video of the entire build. If you like it, let me know. If you don't, tell me to fuck off. Love, love, love. I'll see you again for the next video. Also, just to add, um, if there's anybody in America and Canada, if you'd like to buy any of my scenics, there is an American distributor below where you can pre-order your items, which he should be receiving very shortly. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. And this time, signing out. Love, love, love. Boop.